Hey everyone, Joe here from Action X. Welcome to What's on the Tube, or welcome back if this is your fourth The Rookie Feds episode review. It's the end of the crossover event, but it didn't really feel much like a crossover event. It felt more like just a story. Kind of like it had a connection. It wasn't really a well done connection. I feel like they, you know, what we're gonna save all that at the very, very end. Uh, it's also a, the rookie feds. I feel like the, similar to when when I reviewed the rookie earlier this week, that that was I think the, well, first of all, the best episode of the season so far. One of the, one of the best episodes for the show overall. I can safely say. With this episode, it for and again, remember we've all, we're only four episodes into the show, so it's kind of like uh, it's like really not groundbreaking to say, oh, this episode's the new number one, or this episode is like one of the great. This is definitely one of the greats for now. Like a uh, four episode, it was really great. Uh, but like I said, with the whole with the rookie last time, same thing as well. Is like in terms of like the crossover event hypeness, it didn't really. It didn't really live up to it, and I feel like that was just a little bit of false marketing, in my opinion. But I'll get some more about that in the actual review in a second. Um, but for now, I think this episode delivered on all fronts, giving us a really a little sadistic story, getting a little bit more serious with the characters, allowing them to kind of like be a little bit more close to each other. Because you know, despite the stakes, I feel like this is the closest we're so far seeing our, our characters get get with each other. And yeah, they've been together for now like over a month now, so of course you're gonna get more comfortable with them as you go along. And honestly, again, like this just turned out to be one of the one of the great episodes, and I can't wait to see um, how certain um, bonds and connections that we were making making throughout this episode is going to turn out in the future. Uh, but for now, let's go through the butcher recap and talk about this week's episode of the Rookie Feds. So we pick up sort of where the rookie left off, in my opinion. I don't think it's one hundred percent taking off one hundred percent exactly where it was. I want to say it's like. It's debatable. It, it, it's if it, it felt like it was the day before, like the day after. Like it's just like okay, everyone's still fresh out of this, and you know they're just picking up the story where, where I left that. And also, I, I think I heard a line saying that three days later. I think I could be wrong though, but this is immediately taking place after Rosalind's death. And as much as that crossover element has to do, so the, the I, in short, the reason why this was a kind of like a it's all connected type of thing is that Rosalind's. Accolade is the villain for this week's episode of the Rookie Feds. Uh, so it's the Feds kind of picking up where, where they left off since the individual has already fled the L LA. So technically he's out of the jurisdiction, which would make it the Feds' problem to go hunt him down. Which, it makes sense. Like, there is a connective through line. I do get that. It's just, you kind of, when you really advertise crossover event, you kind of expect a little more. But again, I'm, I'm really harping on that too, my, am I? I really am. So they're looking around. They're on the other side of the of the house. I'm not sure if they. I, I, I want to say they did interact with the rookie characters. Again, the moment we when we actually do get to see both castes like interacting in the same scene is going to be hella fun. But you know, I'm I'm not, I'm not surprised we're not there yet. We just started the season. You, that's kind of like more like a mid season thing or a later season thing. I get that. I understand that. But I'm pretty sure they probably had some off screen thing uh, where they all like you know kind of like point base of like here's where where left off. No one and. and um, Simone would have probably had some, some more fun bands. That would have been Simone meeting Bailey for the first time. Obviously, again, you know, what, it is what it is. We, we didn't get that scene, so it's fine. Um, so they're walking on another part of the property that Rosalind was renting out. They're just kind of flabbergasted the fact that Rosalind is one of the most high-profile murderers in the world, and she basically orchestrated her own suicide attempt, her, her, her own murder, which I'm like, damn, damn. Um, but but yeah, it is what it is on that front. They're just trying to like... It, it's literally the only real through line between the last episode of The Rookie to this episode where like it's that's the only Rosalind line we get. They're focused on the accolade that um, the that Laura and Brandon were helping Lopez, Harper, and Aaron tack down in the last episode of The Rookie. So they're kind of picking up the case after that because they're going to assume like it's him, it's the guy. Uh, he probably was just in on like just as a failsafe that he will kill... Um, Rosalind, if no one decides not to do it. Um, so they're looking for a sniper point, and they're just guesstimating about his personality, and like, how would this even get done? And then even <laughs> Simone in her random acts, like, finds out, like, yeah, this would, this little patio spot would be perfect to snipe, because it's closer to the plaza gate. And she was right, because there's a little, a little token of his presence there. A little token. Um, we cut to, like, a, a news broadcast of when Rosalind was announced to be murdered, um, well, killed, let's call it, 
and uh, we see the guy, presumably to be her accolade, just watching, but he's fully hair fully grown out, bearded, and he decides like now that you know his face is all over the news and everything, uh, he shaves off his hair, he shaves off the beard, uh, he dyes the hair black instead of dirty blonde, so he's he looks almost un un unrecognizable, which I'm like, damn, that's actually a pretty good up un glow up in my opinion. So they're tr they're still tracking him down. Eventually, they uh, we get a name for this guy named Eli. And the only reason why I'm able to remember that name is because of the book of Eli. So I'm like, yeah, it's just association by association type of, type of ordeal. Um, knowing of how severe this fright is and knowing that most likely he's already left, he already left LA to get away from the whole, you know, all the debacle right now. Uh, this makes it like something that they're going to need more help on. So um, Garza decides to call in um, from DC to ask for any sort of reinforcements to help them um, figure out the status of this case. I want to say, yeah, so we get a little call scene, well, off screen sort of, where um, Carter's calling his wife, uh, his soon-to-be ex-wife about her picking up the child because they're, like, obviously they're taking taking on the Rosalind case, kind of, so it's kind of like all, all hands on deck type of ordeal right now, but she doesn't understand it, she's already at work, and you know, the, the usual divorce, divorce couple, or soon-to-be divorce couple bickering up, like, you know, you're not doing enough for your child, or you're not doing enough for your child, like, you know, that, that sort of thing. Uh, Garza says, steps in and just, and just tells him, like, the, the plain old truth, the plain old Garza truth. After three divorces, after, like, you'll eventually get used to it. Like, you'll, you'll get used to it. Like, you know, divorces will eventually become easy for you. <laughs> like, the way guys are saying this, like, bro, I don't want to get married three times. No one wants to get married three times. It's easy to just, like, do the one and then that's it. You're if and or but. And I understand, like, in today's world, like, the, the likelihood of divorce is more higher than ever because people keep changing people. Not, well, I don't say, I say that very light. I don't say that very lightly. I say more on long lines of. People are always growing. They're always figuring out new things. They're always changing stuff about themselves. So the person they married at the time of their of that self isn't the same. Isn't going to be the same person that that person's going to eventually um, wind up living. To. I could be wrong though, but uh, it's, it's again simple old Garza banter with um, with Carter, and it, it's nice to get the two oldest men some some you know some bro time over here. I don't even know what to call anymore. Like oh god, I'm, I'm not I'm not used to deal with this old. And I'm ironically it's my birthday this week, so I'm like I'm, I don't even want to think about getting old. Um, so I want to say the next thing we go is we get back to the, we get back to the FBI, st um, headquarters where, um, I think it's, uh, Laura is conducting a little bit of a, of a briefing about like, of, uh, Rosalind and Eli's connection about, um, the symbolism. Oh, that reminds me, I forgot. So the only rookie cameo, the only rookie crossover we got is when, um, Laura and Brendan decide to head back over to the, um, the tank where Bailey was at. And they were checking out the t the tank markers and everything. There was a bit of like a a, a funny a funny line between um, Bradford and and Laura, where Bradford was like, you know, I'm I'm more interested in the cold heart evidence, like you know, trying to figure out like piece by piece, trying to figure out something. And she's like, oh, so psychologically profile what you, what your dad did to you as a child, like doesn't classify to what your personality is today. And he honestly, again, like if you're a true rookie fan, you know exactly she hits the nail on the door there. But uh, for Bradford, he's just like, he was kind of put in his place a little bit, like not physically, but just mentally. And that was like a little bit sweet. Um, as much as I had fun with that one scene, that, that fun scene, it, it, it's up there in terms of crossover moments so far. It, it just baffles me that, like, again, I mean, this is the last time I'll talk about this before we actually get to the proper crossover review part. <laughs> again, you, you advertise this as a crossover event, meaning that characters were going to interact with characters multiple times throughout an episode. We only got two real scenes with Brendan and Laura with the, on The Rookie, and we only got one for Bradford here. Again, I know COVID and everything. I guess they like. I mean, I guess they're comfortable with lending out actors for a day. And of course, obviously, when you're mixing all the castles up, it, it would get jumbled. Believe me, I've already let all the logistics with the Arrowverse when 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 COVID started. I understand all that. It just it just would have been easier a little bit. You know what? Again, we're, we're, we're moving on to the next thing. Um. So yeah. So like I was mentioning before, um, they find like a little bit of like a trademark logo on it, like a little bit of like a. This has nothing really to do with the actuality of the of how the barrel operator how Rosalind had him designed it but it is like kind of like a signature market that when they do look back on it, it's like oh this is how Eli marked himself at like this is his murder this is his killing uh, so with all that they compile some sort of rough um, profile on 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 Eli uh, however another agent steps in kind of like 
up the ante a little bit, kind of like gives his, his own unique take on Eli, and you know we're all like flabbergasted. And I thought for a second, is this her husband? Like her soon, her ex husband? Is that him? It's like I, I I thought that was him. Like the way the reaction was, I just like felt like that's him, isn't he? And and Garza's like, no, that's not him. No. Uh, so that used to be Laura's old partner when she was working over at the BCU. I'm not sure what that is. It was her other job before she got recruited to this unit, and um. What was it? Where was I going with that? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so they apparently did not leave on good terms because, um, so what happened was when Laura was outed to have been having her husband cheat on her with her best friend, it kind of embarrassed her. She kind of went on a little bit of a spiral. She had to take a sabbatical, and, you know, her leaving that unit and that leaving uh, her partner was just not. It wasn't easy for her, so her best bet was just to cut off that entire part of her life for now and just, you know, focusing on her new life here in LA, which. I do understand, like, I, I do get you want, if you want to do that, but at the end of the day, like, just don't expect these awkward moments where, like, yeah, he's he's here now, so it's like, you know, you kind of have to deal with it. Uh, so he's on guards as unit for the, for the team, for the episode. He, he's helping them out, like, get a second opinion on trying to figure out what Eli is. Um, they also have a, a bit of a banter going, because, again, when you have two very well-known profilers working on the same team, you kind of ha tend to have some, you know, tension and, you know, maybe some heat, as Simone would later call it. Um, I want to say, yeah, so Garza asked, asked both of them for their opinion on Eli. They get, like, a little bit of a, of a idea of a, maybe he'll head back to his home home state, maybe, like, um, isolate himself for a while, maybe spend some time with family. His dad's still down there, so they decide to head down there and um, figure it out, figure out what, what what's up with that. Um, so they're in real, they're just trying to figure out anything about, about everything. I know we got, there was a scene between um, Simone and Carter about just, you know, how this sort of thing, like, you know, abductions and later murders, like, you know, someone's just thinking about the times where when she was in, um, when she was a guidance counselor, I swear to God, it's, it's, this episode, she kind of mentions it in over every single, like, when I was a guidance counselor, or when I had, I, I had, like, 20 children, like, I'm not trying to, like, lay light on what she's been for, but, like, the, it's these amount of times when she's mentioning, I was a guidance counselor, I was a guidance counselor, we get it, like, we, we understand it, like, chill, chill, chill out there for a bit. Um, so she's not used to it. She even brings up to uh, uh, a point where one individual, one of her, um, one of her girls, were, was kidnapped, and you know they, the police could could barely find a lead on her, on her. So they basically forgot about the case, and then two months later they found the body, and it, it was like it was heartbreaking for Simone because like you know she doesn't even want to imagine what they had to go through before their deaths, and there was nothing really she could do about it at the time because you know she wasn't in that field. All she could do is like kind of help them inside the school, but there's really only so much outside forces you have out there. Uh, I want to say after that point, we want to get to, yeah, so we're in Denver. We split up. Um, once the way Garza said, okay, Laura and, and Simone, you're heading off to, to, um, Eli's high, old high school and like meet with the league of guidance counselor, which I'm like, Oh God, that's pretty fun. That, that's actually, that was actually a, a good chuckle out of me. Uh, meanwhile, Garza, Garza, Brendan, the, um, I'm really struggling with names. I already forgot. I'm, I'm, I'm off a tailwind over here. Everyone, uh, Laura's old partner and Carter are going to go check out, um, the dad. They're trying to figure out like, if there's anything we can get out of him. Um, see, actually, no, like, Garza's not, not there yet. He's off doing something else. So it's just, um, Garza's just staying, staying back in the plane, like, like, like the, like the OG he is. Um, so when we get to the high school, the guidance counsel is kind of, like, being very plain, being very basic with his hands. They're not really getting into any specifics. Uh, even when, um, when Simone and, and Laura are fact-checking him about things, then he suddenly, wrote, oh, yeah, I did do that. Or, yeah, I did do this. Um... But then, you know, like, they're like, you know, cut the bullshit. Like, it's just clear as day. Like, you just did not care. Like, you know, you, this guy needed your help. And instead of helping him, you let him, like, you know, you let him fall for the cracks. And it's like, unless you really help us out here, I'm going to report you and make sure, A, you don't work in a school again. And, B, you pay for anyone's lives you actually inadvertently destroyed. He's like, okay, okay, okay. okay. Like, look, you know, he told me one time that his dad would put him for these endurance tests, as he liked to call them. Basically trying to make sure he's worthy of being a human being. Like, testing his mind, testing his resistance and all that sort. And, you know, like, you know, eventually, you know, that would re re result in malnourishment or burn marks or freaking drowning. I kid you not, this dad would actually put his son underwater just to test if he can breathe that much, which I'm like, damn, that's really, that's really bad. Um, 
And you're like, you got to make it of a serial killer. I would feel, I would feel totally unlucky if I was to run into him anywhere, which is kind of ironic because we're, so wherever he ended up, um, we don't know the state yet, uh, but he's definitely not LA. He's off in the scrapyard looking for parts for his next, um, his next torture chamber. And he runs into a pretty cute college girl who they kind of hit it off a little bit with their love of art and their like interpretation of certain, I, I already lost the boy. I can't even half ass it anymore. Uh, but it's clear he decided to make her, make her, her, his next victim already. And like, Dude, you just literally killed one of the biggest murderers in LA or th in the world, and you already want to go back to like amateur hour. I'm like, okay, you do you, man. You do you. you satisfy your ego somehow. So, and also, number one thing, you do not go home with a guy you just met in a scrapyard. It's literally do not do not date psychopaths 101. I mean, what? Regardless if they have short hair, that they're good looking or not, it does not matter. They're in the scrapyard for some weird reason. Do not even bother. At least go to a coffee shop for a date or something. You don't. You don't immediately go back to his house to drink wine, especially if you're a college student with little to no resources. Uh, because what happens after that is that they uh, he takes her back to his house, and you know they're getting comfortable with wine, and he's like, "Oh, I got some rare wine in the cellar." And I'm just like, "Bro, like the moment." A guy you just met asked you, come to the basement. It's a definite sign, like, you need to get the fuck out of there. But she's already too late on that. He already locked all the doors. And he puts on that weird Plague Max, and that scares the fuck out of her. And I'm just like, look, we're in 2021, 2022, by this time, point of the timeline. Look, if you don't know if you don't know anything about your safety, about, you know, that's on you. Okay, I, I don't mean harm on anyone, just like, you know, you you can think smarter. Think, think, think better. That's all I'm saying. Uh, meanwhile, um, the other agents are, are interrogating that. That's like, oh, my son would never do this. He's kind of like a pansy. He would never be, he, he would never be a cold, a hearted killer. That's not him. And, you know, they check out the whole house. There's no sign of him. And they're just like, okay, that, that, that said, like, you know, the dad's clean as a whistle. Um, uh, but once, um, Simone calls in saying that, no, the dad literally abused him as a kid. Like, you need to go arrest him now. Uh, so they turn back. They find him burning, like, literally every piece of Eli's, um, trace in that house. Even a burner phone that they found, ironically speaking. Um, they put him away, um, they take him back to the, the local PD's holding cell to interrogate him. He doesn't really get, give them much advice or any, any sort of clue to go on. The only thing left they have is the burner phone, but the PD is already working on recovering that. So as of right now, cause they don't know entirely if Eli is there in, in Denver, they decide, you know what, we're going to do what every FBI agent that has to go through whenever they have to stay somewhere for a night. You're going to the cheapest motel you find and you're going to sleep there. Um, and I'm just like, damn. They literally had no choice in that front, did they? Uh, and that that motel, it's actually pretty nice. It's a, it's not the worst motel I've ever seen. It could definitely be worse, but I'm like, damn, like if, you know. I think one time I slept in a motel. Did I? Well, it was a hotel, but then they changed it to a motel. Like, I, I never asked my dad the truth. So, fun fact, I, I went to Florida one time. I want to say it was the first time. No, it was, it was either the last time when my grandma was alive or the first time after my grandma passed. I went with my whole family. And... We had a usual spot, a usual hotel spot we would go to. And uh, I think by accident, my dad may have accidentally forgot to book or confirm a booking or they lost our reservation. And I was like, they, we went to another thing and my dad just said, oh, they moved the company or they, they, they changed location. I'm like, bro, like this, and this looks like a motel. This doesn't look like a hotel. Like there's two completely different things here. And again, it, it wasn't a financial thing. It wasn't at all. It could have just been a misunderstanding. And again, when you travel somewhere, your jet lag and everything, you really don't care about the environment. You just need a place to sleep. And I think we just ended up staying in that motel for the rest of the trip. But So motels can't be nice. Motels can't be nice. Don't tell me don't tell you wrong. Um, so everyone's just kind of bunking up. We got um, Garza and and Clark and no, not Clark. Um Carter just doing a little bit of some 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 man time. You just relax by the pool. Just Garza giving more advices of a divorce of a three-time divorced man. And you know, just saying that the best thing you can do. Throw away the engagement ring. I'm just saying, bro, you, you, you just lost thousands of dollars. You threw that in the ocean. You idiot. <laughs> That's like, why? You can easily sell that and make some money back. You're not going to make your whole value back. But like, come on. Yeah, the f I understand it's symbolic, but it's the same thing when Tony Stark threw his original arc reactor into the ocean. You, um, remember, you're polluting. I mean, yeah, it's it's supposed to be the strong symbolic moment that I am no longer defined by my suits. I am who I am, which is a cool sentiment. But then again, you're throwing basically experimental technology into the ocean. 
Uh, which, again, we'll probably never, ever see the light of day again. And again, if Armor Wars decides to pick that fret up, you know what? It, it is what it is, but still, you, you gotta really think before you throw stuff. You know, you never really know when it's gonna come back to play here. Um, Simone, Simone and um, Laura are weirdly doing some girl talk, which is... Honestly, I, I knew, like, this was gonna come. This eventually was gonna come. But I was like, you know what? They kind of have, like, that weird sisterhood thing. Like, they are obviously have really barely any... Like, if they were to meet at a coffee shop, they would absolutely have no conversational point. They're just fellow agents that, are, that have to work together. So, like, you kind of have to get chummy with them. And, you know, Simone is kind of pulling your tail a little bit. little bit back. Like, you know, it, it seems like you guys have some heat. Like, you know, you, that visiting um, profile, you got some heat going there. And... She admits, like, yeah, there was some some connection there, but at the time she was married to a fiance to a man who literally cheated on her. But regardless of that, like, she was she was still loyal to him, so and she she never acted on anything. And so even now, like, she doesn't want to do anything because, like, you know, we just got back together, we're still friends. It's like you don't want to complicate things, you know. And meanwhile, over at the other guys, like the young guys, they're just like talking about like you know random stuff, and it's like yeah, that's traditional young men talk. Like you just talk about random stuff. Um, but how, are, what, what is a cool, cool point that happens in, in that scene in particular is that, um, Brent, Brandon mentions that, um, Brendan men mentions his, um, phobia of seeing blood because of, you know, Laura's profile of him, like being surrounded by too much stage blood, like made him so weakened about like re seeing real blood. And, you know, he said, you know, to do some sort of like, um, mental trick and sort of like whenever you see blood, you would think of like nice thoughts and that might sound creepy but it's just meant so that you don't get scared when you actually see blood that's that's kind of the purpose there um but yeah but after that after those conversations are ended um i think yes i want to say yeah we get to the pool brendan in and simone just overhear everything that garza was saying to clark and he's like you know what uh carter carter my bad say so, you know what you're gonna be divorced you gotta get yourself back out there there's a cute chick across across the pool and she's clearly giving her him doomy eyes. And I'm just like, what? Okay, first of all, it, it, it's kind of shady to find, a, to find a single person at a motel. Like, if, if you do that, like, you're, you're most likely certain they, this is not their first go around. This is clearly not it. Like, again, again I know, like, there are exceptions. Like, oh, maybe she's on vacation, too, and she didn't want to spend money on a hotel. I get that. I understand that. There's Airbnbs nowadays. There's no excuse to use motels anymore. Uh, but regardless of that, regardless of that, I, I, I agree with I, I agree with with um with uh Carter on this. A he's not technically married, so technically this is still cheating. And believe me, I have had that conversation with someone very recently about that. that that's I, that's also ironic. And second of all, he says it's so tacky for an agent to be on on a, on a work related matter in another state to hook up with someone. Like it's so tacky. Meanwhile, Laura goes up to the her old partner's door, says like, "Can I come in?" I'm just like, "Bruh." And it started out sweet. She was explaining to herself, like, you know, I had to ghost you. I had to distance myself away from you so I can have this fresh new life so I can get away from my past and kind of, like, figure out who I am now in the context, like, having dealt with everything that just happened. And, you know, they all is forgiven. They get, they go back to their banter and they give a hug. They give a nice hug. And I'm like, the moment, the moment two people that are clearly into each other hug... It is basically like the new universe is saying, like, okay, okay, we're going to hug, and then we're going to kiss, and then we're going to... And it happens. Like, you know, it, it, again, uh, for, in only four episodes, I, I really fell for Laura. Like, you, you, she has had a lot thrown in her between her backstory and the actual show, whether it was, like, her dealing with her husband cheating on her, her divorce, going to a whole new state, start a whole new unit, um, reuniting with her former best friend who cheated on, cheated on that her husband cheated on with, Having thrown, like, basically dirt in her face. Like, she has been through a lot. She needs a win. She needs the D. And she got the D. And she was happy. And honestly, again, I, I like, Laurel definitely does not, like, again, rule number rule number seven in a lot. Never judge a book by its cover. Just because they look like something doesn't mean they're exactly that thing. You know, you you want to talk to them, you want to approach them, figure that out. Uh, for me, personally, I, I, I look at Laurel, like, I'm pretty sure she, when she met her husband, you know, she was very straightforward to the book. You know, just went on dates, got married. Didn't have kids, but still, like, you know, I, I, she doesn't look like the sleeping around type. But, you know, this kind of felt empowering for her. Like, you know, that she got back out there. She was able to, like, do something she's always wanted to do, and she did it. She's done it. Uh, even Simone gives her, like, some praise and, you know, like, some excitement over there. 
Uh, however, uh, Laura notices to her, to her that, hey, hey, by the way, you were you were acting a little bit depressed when, before I came up here. What, what's up with that? What's what's going on? And she's just admitting, like, yeah, when she started this job, like, she felt like, again, like she tells her dad, I could do some change. I could help a lot of people if I was here in this position. And I'm here, I'm at this moment, and I still don't feel like I can do anything because there's still people like Eli out there that are doing these very horrible things to people. And of course, we had to get a steamy moment where, like, the um, the, the um, Laura's old partner, uh, who she just bay, literally takes off his shirt uh, mid run and just like, "We get it, we get it. You want to bang? Okay, that, that's going to be a thing I'm going to have to say from now on, isn't it?" Uh, Garza brings back the news. They found the burner phones, um, uh, you know, details. They find out that, that it's only been used to contact one number, which is currently in use in Arizona. So they all fly out there. Uh, however, sadly, the only cell towers that are in response to it are pretty v vast and major. So they need to find any sort of lead um, to figure it out. So they managed to isolate it long enough to figure out that he's in this very small town with barely any people, barely any data, a lot of quiet time. So they decided to head out there first to go check it out. Uh, meanwhile, Eli has begun torturing his um, the girl with a heating trap. And I'm just like, damn. It's, it's like a basically a burning sauna. And the way that, like, you know, the steam burns you quicker. I'm just like, does it really? I mean, it kind of does. Because it's, like it's like water, so it's like kind of penetrating. I don't even know why I'm going for that. I don't even know why exactly I'm saying anything. <laughs> Moving on, because I'm, I'm about to go down a rabbit hole here. Um, they arrive at the site. They got approved for the arrest warrant. So they're ready to go in and, like, bust in and kick some ass. Um, so all of them suit up. Um, Garz is with Simone and, and Laura to go in the front of the house. The rest are going for the side of the house to try and get him in case he decides to escape. Uh, however, their cover's already blown with um, the visiting profile. Actually, he jumps into a trap. Uh, his leg gets basically, like, really um, punctured. So um, they decide to, like, already burst in. They look around um, ground floor. He's not there. Uh, but then um, Simone discovers the basement door. She goes down in and she finds the girl. Uh, she turns up the heat to try and help her. But then she notices Eli running away. Garza gives her orders to like go after him, go, um, go catch him. While Garza goes takes her of the girl, Laura goes to back her up. Uh, also, yeah, but, uh, while uh, when Brandon is trying to um, heal the the guy's leg, he has the bleeding moment and he's trying to use the the tool that um, this guy gave him. I'm not trying to like. You know, think about something else when you're thinking about, like, this thing you clearly don't like. And, you know, he's thinking, sink pumpy, sink pumpy, sink pumpies. And I'm just like, that's going to be a meme, isn't it? That's going to be definitely a meme. It works, and he's able to help him, like, kind of, like, get, get his uh, leg elevated so it doesn't get chopped off. Uh, Simone follows foot uh, on foot, but she doesn't find him. However, he springs, he's, it is October right now. There shouldn't be flies and mosquitoes in my house, but for some reason, there's an annoying fly in my space right now that refuses to die, and I need to kill it. That might sound extreme, but it is extreme. Anywho. Um, yeah, so after that point... Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, Eli jump scares her. She, he's, he has, like, that very... That curvy blade, that curvy knife that, like, I guess you use for meat skewering. I, I don't even know where I'm going with that. Uh, he surprises her. He's about to stab her with it. Uh, Laura manages to shoot him in the in the right rib, um, pu putting him down. Uh, she gets him handcuffed, and yeah, that's about it. Like that, that's it. Which I'm like a little anticlimactic, but you know what? It is what it is. Um, I think they all just regroup back in LA. You know, so Eli has been arrested, and they found in his house that they found a lot of you know data cards that contain basically the visual evidence they need to prove that he was responsible for like twelve other killings. So like you know, that's a bit of a, a good closure for her. And you know, Simone is thinking a little bit on the negative side, saying that yeah, we saved the girl's life, but you know, now she has a whole lifetime of trauma to deal with like pretty much sure like her life will never be the same again and Bagarza and I has a point too like saying like at least she has a life at least she'll be able to go forth in the world like at least knowing she still lived for a reason um so they all split up from there Garza is about to take uh cl cl um damn card her out to, for drinks make him like begin his new single life getting him a bachelor's pad you know trying to like um, make sure he's now follows the, the correct steps to dealing with life post-divorce. Um, Simone and Laura have a brief conversation just about, you know, just the fear of being on this job. Like, you know, you're just going to have moments where you, you are going to lose sometimes. Like so far this team hasn't lost anything, but you know, there will be days where you just lose, you know, and you do your damn best, but you just got to keep going and keep trying and solve the next case as fast as you can and as efficient as you can. Um, so yeah, I think after that, yes, and then they talk about the, 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 the hookup thing and, you know, and as much as she's like 
Simone's thankful for Laura's advice that maybe, you know, you could take some of your own advice, you know, maybe see where this thing can go with your old partner, you know, see where that goes. Um, so her and Brendan head back out to see him one more time before they leave. Laura just tells him, like, you know what, I, that, that, that night was fun. It was a fun night, but guess what? Um, I'm still in this rediscovery phase on myself. I'm not ready to do a committed relationship when I'm still in the midst of figuring out who am I in this new unit, in this new city, in this new part of my life, which again, is very respectful. She's not denying him a relationship, but she's saying, like, right now, I just need to make certain that the person you're going to be dating is someone you still like, and that person's still changing. But they do agree, you know what, when they're when they're back in town again, you know, or whenever before she he heads back to DC, they, if they want to catch up, they can do it right now. And I don't know why the kissing inside an FBI headquarters is the smartest thing in the world, but you know what, they kiss, and that was the end of the episode as well as the crossover event. I'm sorry, I sounded like really melodramatic over there. I was just trying to emphasize my point there. Because that's how I that's how I always do things, um, but anywho, uh, in terms of this episode, I thought it was great. I thought this was definitely like similar to the rookies episode of the crossover. This felt like a like one of the best episodes the rookie fans have, have produced. Uh, you had the characters filing on all cylinders, um, forming forging these new connections, forming these like bonds, like giving more of like the banter between them. And I love it. I, I always love it when characters you know are becoming more more defined, getting more layers to them, and like. Figuring out, like, these, like, stronger connections with each other. And, you know, um, I love all that stuff. Eli's a bit sadistic in terms of a killer. I honestly thought they were going to try and make Eli the Rosalind of the universe. And it kind of felt like it again. But, like, you know, I I would be perfectly fine if they left the door open for more Eli stuff. I feel like there's just more to his character. He doesn't interact with them too much. Um, it could just be a one-off. But, you know, I could be wrong. You know, you never really know. It's always part of, you know, forward thinking when it comes to plenty TV shows. So you never know if he, if he will pop up again. But it would be nice um, in terms of, like, just having a recurring threat for them to deal with. Um, nice for Garza and um, Cl uh, Carter to get some bro time going there. You know, it was only a matter of time before these two, like, had, like, a true, you know, bonding moment since the last time they kept having these scenes with each other. It was always about uh, him trying to usurp Garza, getting him fired from his role. So, but it was nice for them to be, like, on, on, on like, a, a really nice, friendly, like, really close, friendly look and, you know, just, like, giving him, giving him advice and everything. Um, again, good for, good for Laura getting some action, <laughs> um, so it's, but it's also a sign of, you know, like she's, she's ready to move on. She's ready to like, you know, explore what is next for her. And, you know, that could take many shapes or forms. Um, and then, yeah, but in terms of, so in terms of, and also I forgot to mention before I go to the crossover party is that Simone did great again, you know, her tapping into like, even though it got a little bit repetitive towards the end about her being a guidance counselor and, you know, the 20 years she served there. Um, but you know, but still her using that experience of like seeing these kids that were like taken away so young and like she couldn't really do anything at the time to, to help them. Now she's here. It definitely is a good motivational booster for her to like keep going on her journey, like to keep fighting and like take down these people that are going to cause more harm than not to everyone. So in terms of the, in terms of the rookie feds episode, this was great. Two thumbs up. I really enjoyed it. Uh, this is exactly the episodes I want to see going forward. Just there'll be more of the connection as we go along. However, in terms of the crossover aspect, I'm going to be frank. I'm, I'm going to be really frank. It was kind of weak. It really was. And I feel like that's the first time I've ever said anything about anything about the rookie. Now, again, as standalone episodes, each episode was great. It was really great. Really, really well done. It, it was just for me, the fruit line, it just didn't reach up to my saying. Like when you hype up an event called the first rookie crossover event. And I guess, yes, it is a story. It is Rosalind's character, her final coup de gras against Nolan. And then the, 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 the focal point, the follow-up is her accolade that she recruited, uh, take being the one being hunted down by the feds. I understand that that was the fruit line they were trying to go here yet, but it would have, made better sense to advertise this differently, you know, get a sense of explanations differently, and you know, because the promos made it seem like they were, like, going to have this crosser, especially when when Grace said, looks like the feds are here to help. Like, that clearly sounds like a team up moment. Like, okay, we're going to team up. We're going to figure out how to get this done. Because, again, Rosalind is a pretty big threat. You would imagine the feds would want to get on this, like, the moment that Rosalind emerged from her faces. And I don't mean just the Brendan and Laura. I mean the whole team. Just, like, them going to the, to the, to the LAPD um, station to go meet with them. And, you know, discussing the case. Like, that's what I was expecting for the... Again, is it out of the realm of possibility we will get that moment in the future? Yes, we will most undoubtedly get that in the in the future. That's going to happen at some point. But, 
you don't want to like advertise yourself like this is how it is and this is going to be the crossover because when crossover means you get basically like everyone from the other shows popping into each other just like the Arrowverse used to do and again this kind of feels like season one flash season three arrow type crossover like yeah this is a very it's a, a connected story it is not that very well defined but you're just overpowered by the story of the episode and just seeing the character interaction so Seeing Lauren and Brandon really interact with three of our fellow rookie members are great as well. Uh, that was great to see, like, more more collaboration between them. Bra it's always great to get a Bradford scene in there. And also, Bradford and Laura are basically the polar opposites, but also the sa same identical thing on each other's shows. Um, and them getting into banter with each other is great. Again, this is this is what I wanted to see if you actually... If this actually was a crossover event, it really wasn't. You know, they could have just advertised this as like a, as a story that takes two episodes from two sides, like something like that. But I'm just saying, like you know, if, on that front, the marketing and everything, you know, that was weak on that front. That was very false communication, in my opinion. I, I, I someone else would probably tell me like, no, you were you had very too much high expectations. But then again, like if you're picking this up as like this big thing. You kind of need to have some backup to it. You really do. But again, I do understand, as I said before, with the rookie episode review, is that. Um, this has to exist as, as its own standalone Feds episode so that you don't have to feel obligated to watch the rookies part of it because there is a through line. There, You can definitely see there is a connection, but it's also just the fact of, like, you know, choose your words carefully when you're talking about, like, an episode or an event or something like that. Um, so I, I, I can't... I, I gotta give this um, crossover event, like, just a one thumbs up. I'm just like... The story was intriguing. It delivered the best episodes on each series on an, it, on an independence factor, but in terms of, like, a coherent, like connected story and it was a little lackluster it did not feel like it didn't feel to the full potential that i was expecting uh but let me look on below what did you think of a this episode of the rookie feds and b of the old crossover event you know the first crossover event of many hopefully uh let me know that down below let's have a conversation let's talk about it i'm always open to that uh but i believe that's going to do it for me today everyone so if you're unaware this has been once or two from action x reviewing every episode in the hopeful first season of the rookie feds if you want to know what we're doing normally once or two besides our rookie feds episode reviews we're currently doing um, DC Star Girl episode reviews each and every week after Brandon says on the CW. We're doing Walker episode reviews each and every week after Brandon says on the CW. We're doing Walker Independence episode reviews each and every week after new episodes on the CW. And we're also doing the Rookie episode reviews each and every week after Brandon says on ABC on Sunday nights. If you don't care about the Rookie Feds, you're lucky. We'll be back next week with another brand new episode review. However, a little bit of an update on the rest of our programming. As I mentioned at the end of the Rookie episode reviews, um, right now my current TV provider, Files, is currently having an internal battle over with the folks as Nexus Star, uh, who are the current owners of the CW, in terms of, of their extension to allow CW, Pix11, all that sort, to air on my Files box. Right now, there is no PIX11 because they're still in the middle of contract negotiation. One side wants this, the other side wants this. We're in the middle of a stalemate. Something's going to give, and it's very unfortunate that, you know, um, that, you know, for me. Right now, anything could still change. I'll update this on Twitter. Uh, but most likely than not, considering how things are going right now, there is a chance that the follow-up episode reviews for Stargirl, Walker, and Walker Independence will probably be delayed by a day. So for now, Stargirls will be on Friday mo um, on Thursday nights, hopefully Friday morning. Same thing with Walker, Friday night to Saturday morning. Walker Independence, um, Saturday night to Sunday morning, around there. That's going to be the temporary schedule for now. I am very hopeful they will fix it up. It is a big channel still, regardless if it just doesn't get that many viewers. Uh, it is still very much a cornerstone of any TV program to have Channel 11 or Channel 511 on your on your broadcasters so hopefully they will resolve things pretty soon that will allow us to kind of go back to ship uh but for right now we're just monitoring the situation closely and you know that could change by tomorrow or you know we'll we'll keep you all posted so go again go follow us on twitter uh to stay up to date with any sort of updates we may have for either of our channels um uh, again please subscribe to us only on youtube.com slash actually videos please like favorite share if you want to and as well as ring the bell for notification when our next episode review is live but until we see each other again, for all you feds out there, I'll see you all next week for the, for the next episode review. But until then, stay safe out there, be good to each other, and as always, peace out.